This is just going to be a short video on the 3D printed toy robot uh, silent running drones I made. They're a pen walker with uh, a rocking body action. And I'll turn them on and show you walking first. As you can see, they're running at two radically different speeds. This faster one has a 100 RPM motor, and the slower one has a 30 RPM motor. The motor is an N20 gearbox motor. Uh, the power is provided by two CR2032 coin cells that are inside. This is the uh, remote controlled version of Robot Hut's original design. Now I'll disassemble this slower version and uh, show you what's inside. The front plate is just held on by four screws. I just used two for this. Here we have, uh, this is the bevel gear that's on the N20 motor that drives this gear that's mounted to it this brass shaft that turns this crank and this crank. These two things are the pins that move up and down and propel the robot. This gear cam combination on top is what provides the rocking motion. I'll put this temporary uh, front panel on so you can see it operating. I'll turn it up. The switch is held in by the front panel and just sits in this pocket. It's captured after the front panel is on. Here you can see the cranks moving up and down and this motion here that, that drives the uh, frame in relation to the body to give the rocking motion. This is the 30 RPM version. You can also see the two coin cells there. I'll disassemble it further and show you what's inside. The frame just comes out just like this. When you put it in, you have to kind of put it in at an angle. This clamp but uh, this is called the motor clamp or what i call the motor clamp and it has a pin built into the front which mates with a, a hole in the front panel and they pivot that gives you a pivoting action in the back there's a hole which mates with this pin normally this would be glued in but i've got it so you can take it apart. This little pin. The main body is made in two parts. I've got them temporarily held together now with a double-sided tape. You would want to glue it together. This is so this could be planted flat on the build plate. Here's the back of the main body. Here are the internal workings. This main part's called the frame. That's the clamp. These legs are just mirror image of one another. Actually, they're the same. You make two of them. And they're glued in place or would be glued in place normally. The switch comes from a T light or a uh, battery holder that I bought on it. Banggood. It's one of these. CR2032 two cell battery holders. You use the switch out of those. But you can also use the switch out of a uh, T light. Or at least the ones I found would, would fit. I'll take it apart even further. 
these these two screws that hold the clamp on also hold these two wires which make up the contacts for the battery and they go to the switch through the switch to the motor on one side and just straight to a switch on the other side if I take that off Probably be easier if I took the batteries out. Notice the relationship of the battery to one another. We're both in the same orientation. If the motor was to run backwards, you could just flip that orientation the other way. Kind of all falls apart when you take that clamp off. There are the two uh, terminals clamp this is the motor I've made the gear so that it would fit loosely on the motor to avoid if it's flatted it would be hard to drill out if it was a uh, undersized it would be impossible to drill out so there is a washer a three millimeter washer that goes between the uh, motor In the gear, which kind of acts like a bearing. The battery compartments for the CR2032 batteries, there are holes on the inside and the outside of little troughs for the wire to go. The wire is simply solid, solid uh, 22 gauge hookup wire like you would use on your breadboard. One of them. The one on the outside is hooked in at the top, goes through the bottom, all the way over here, and back up to the top again, and then is bent over on the, the edges to hold it in. The two inside ones just go in, in where the little troughs right here, and there are holes in the bottom that they come out of. If you build it, after you do that, you'll want to come in and use your flush trimmers to trim off uh, that wire as it comes out. Here is the uh, eighth inch shaft, or you could probably get by with a three millimeter shaft. There are washers. That one of them's got displaced. Sorry about the dog woofing. Normally these washers go like this, one here, one here, and one here. They act as uh, more or less bearings to make up to Overcome some of the roughness of the 3D print. These are two millimeter by eight millimeter screws, self tapping screws. When you screw that in, you want to make sure that you don't get them so tight that uh, if they clamp down on this pin, everything has to move freely. Take those out. I believe they'll come out with a. Or maybe you have to take the legs off first. Can't remember now. <coughs> there is that assembly. These pens are made in two pieces a pen. Which is printed like this on the printer. 
and the pivot, which is printed like that on the pivot on the printer. And it's a half lap joint. When you get on, they will uh, snap together, hopefully, or they'll go together. You may have to do a little sanding on it. I've never put this one together before. Well, I had this one together first. After you get them uh, together and glued together, you may want to take and lay them on a flat piece of sandpaper and make sure there are no bumps on them so that they ride up and down in these slots easily. Notice on the legs there's a cutout that goes on the inside. That's for clearance for a pen. The other part that you need to know to build it is this distance is set between here and here, so it has to you have to flex it to get the cam gear combination out. So it's important that this shaft right here not be too long or you'll never get it in there. It won't hurt if it's a little short, but it can't be too long. You'll you'll bust this before you get it wedged in there. This should all work freely as you're assembling it. Check it at every point to make sure it works freely. Now, here's the one that's already assembled. Let's watch it run again. This one has a 100 RPM motor. Uh, a 60 to 100 RPM motor would probably do fine. A 30 RPM motor like this one had is too slow, really. Well, thanks for watching.